Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about auto-boxing and auto-unboxing. I'm going to open up my website here to javacjava.com or my web browser to my website and select menu and Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to auto boxing and, and uh, auto unboxing. In my primitive wrapper class tutorial I discussed the basics of how the wrapper classes work. Here's a quick refresher. First uh, statement here, int i equals 41, very simple. Um, then the next statement here, integer ref equals new integer, right, and we're calling the constructor that takes an integer uh, primitive integer type, right? And it basically builds um, reference variable here, integer type, and this is a new integer object, and so the state, right, basically holds 41. So we box the primitive int type value into an integer object. Okay, now if none of this makes any sense to you here, you're going to want to watch my primitive wrapper classes tutorial, and I'll clear everything all right up here. So. Um, and then basically on the next statement here, I have i equals ref dot int value. Int value method returns back an actual primitive int type there. So we unbox the int value from the integer object. The integer object, its state holds basically 41 because it's, it's, that's all it's set to do. It's not set to hold anything else in its state there. Okay, so now based on the code, exam code sample from above, it become quite tedious and manually exchanging values from primitive types to objects and vice versa. So say hello to the concept of autoboxing and unautoboxing. Now Java autoboxing automatically encapsulates primitive data types into object state for us. Java also does the dirty work by auto unboxing object state into a primitive value. Um, Autoboxing opens up a whole new world of possibilities, especially in future concepts that utilize anything related to generics. Now, don't worry about generics yet. I will discuss them when the time is right. So here's the same thing above, only with autoboxing, right? Integer, and this is a reference variable of integer data type, equals 41. So right here, this essentially does the same thing as like if we were to say new integer and pass in 41. Only this is what the beauty of autoboxing is. So autobox the primitive int type value into an integer object. So ref will actually hold, now points to an integer object, integer class object uh, instance that sits on the, on the heap there too, by the way. So, um, and basically that's, that's that, right? And so now, uh, what if we want to get that, that value out of that object? We can simply say, uh, like on this next statement here, int data type i equals ref, right? We're set it anyway. Hey, this is a reference variable. So now this is an auto unbox of a primitive int value from an integer object, right? So our integer object holds its value of 41, right? Basically, and that's contained on the heap, and it's also called its state, right? So we can return back, <coughs> we can get back a primitive type from it. So that's unautoboxing. Or we can store a primitive uh, type to an object. That's autoboxing, right? So this is the same thing basically down here as, well, if you come up here, right? These two lines are basically the same thing as this down here. All right, um, let's just use an ordinary boxing of a string object to an integer object, right? So integer jenny, jenny's a reference variable, equals a, a reference to a new instance of an integer object, right? And notice I'm passing in a string literal of 8675309. Um, so that will turn this into an integer object, right? Holding a value of 8675309. I'm saying 09 on purpose. That's that stupid song, jenny. Never mind. If you don't get that reference, it's just a bad pun on my part, but that's actually a zero, not an O, so um, just 8675309, but anyway. Um, now, so we auto box that into the um, object that's on the memory heap that basically Jenny is pointing to. And we can perform all kinds of um, 
expressions on this too. So we can say, for example, like Jenny plus plus, right, on this particular line here. So what that'll do is that'll unbox, auto unbox Jenny to an int type, perform the plus plus um, expression, adds one, right? And then it'll auto box the result back into the Jenny object, right? More specifically, the object that Jenny is pointing to. But um, anyway, good enough. So on this next statement here, right? Um, I could say int j equals Jenny. That'll auto unbox Jenny to a primitive int type, then assign um, to int j, right? So it's like the un uh, uh, auto unbox will basically take Jenny, turn it into a primitive type right before here, right before the assignment operator, so that we can assign j into a primitive data type, okay? Um, this is nothing unusual, j times equals 2, right? Now we can also say Jenny times equals 2. Um, so what that'll do is that'll unbox Jenny to a primitive int type, evaluate result times equals 2, and then autobox the result back into the Jenny object. And then I'll just display them to the console to show you that they're in fact equal, right? So now, the above example just scratches the, cool, the surface of all the cool stuff that autoboxing and auto-unboxing can do for us. So let's come down here and highlight this code here. Control C to copy, or right click and select copy. I'm going to move the browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right clicking, selecting new shortcut. Type in CMD, next and finish. First thing you want to do is type in Java C, press enter, that's the Java compiler command. You'll see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash CD is short for change directory and black backslash tells us to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory called uh, Java using the MD command. Right now I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder. And I'm going to make a directory here, and I'm just going to call this um, autoboxing. And I'm on a notepad, autoboxing.java, after I change directories here, right? And autoboxing.java is going to be the name of my source code file. All right, let's go ahead and paste this in here. And so, okay, so on the first, uh, first little section here, this is um, exactly what we talked about here. And I'm just going to run, compile and run this here real quick. Java C to compile this, Java to run the Java virtual machine, and we want to invoke the autoboxing class. Okay, so on the first print line here, you can see that the value um, basically took, you know, 8675309, and we added 1 to it and then multiplied it by 2, right? So you can see you can perform expression operators on these, on these objects um, as well, too. So in the auto unboxing and the auto boxing does everything for us. We don't actually have to, you know, tediously type out all that, that stuff for that to happen. All right, so what I've got down here is I just put in a, um, a static method here called triplet, right? And it takes as a parameter an integer class type, right? X, okay? And it will return a standard primitive int type back, right? And I just made it static so I can directly call it here from the public static main void, right? Um, if that doesn't make sense to you, then go ahead and watch my tutorial on static methods, and that'll explain why we're able to do that without actually creating a new object. We're just calling it directly. Anyway, um, so up here in this statement, I'm declaring integer int1 reference variable, I'm setting that equal to 12. And we know by the auto boxing rules here, it just turned this into an object, right? An integer object that contains the state contain the uh, object state or instance state contains 12, okay? On the next statement line down here, I'm passing uh, to the triplet that particular, the reference variable to that object, right? And so when we come down here, we look at the, so the argument is up here, we receive it as a parameter, it'll create like basically a value, um, pass by value there. So we'll have a whole another copy that refers back to that, but that's, that's neither here nor there. But these match, so these are, but this is an integer type, this is an integer type. And when I say integer, I mean the class, right? So what happens here is when we say 
x times 3, right? It'll unauto box x. Take that result, multiply it by 3, and then it will return it back as an int, so it never has to re-auto box or anything there, right? So returns it back as an int. Now, what happens is, um, right here, before the equals comes in, it says, you know, Java does all this in the background for us and says, oh, oh my gosh, I got a primitive um, data type. Basically, that's equal to 36, right? I need to auto box that so I can assign that back into this object reference here, int one, right? Create a new object, basically, with the value of 36, because remember from my previous tutorial that the integer class is immutable, so it just keeps creating new objects there. So it'll assign it a new object holding the value of 36, which is, in other words, that object instance's state, okay? And then we'll display that to the console, you know, int1 and then plus the, you know, the value of that int1 there, right? So using the exact same method down here, I'm declaring a int2 variable, a primitive int type, and I'm setting that equal to 12. There's nothing special, nothing object oriented about this at all. And I'm passing that over, right, that value of 12 there, literally. And so when this comes in here, it's received as the parameter, um, it will basically say, okay, I've got an integer 12. I need to auto box that into X, right? So it'll, right here, it'll say, okay, X is, is an object type. So I need to auto box that into X, right? So our state will hold 12. Then when it comes to execute this particular, um, statement here, it'll say, oh, I need to unauto box this, right? And turn it into the result into, uh, basically a primitive in a type, integer type 12 and multiply that by 3, 36, and return that as an int type, right? So when it comes out of here, it's an int data type, primitive int data type 36, in which you can just go ahead and use the assignment operator and say that equals 36, no more auto boxing or unboxing necessary there. So, and then I'll just display that to the console, um, you know, the string literal plus int 2. Okay, so here's what we end up getting there. Int 1 equals 36, int 2 equals 36. So this is basically, the whole concept of um, auto boxing and unauto boxing there. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this and get this off the screen and leave you with a couple of final thoughts here. So now that I've introduced you to the concept of auto boxing and unauto boxing, I'll be going into great detail on each individual wrapper class in future tutorials. So all eight of them basically, all eight um, auto boxing, well, auto wrapper class things there. So anyway. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.